The Crosspoint 24 controller is uh, conceived as a modular extension for such as LiveFly, and uh, it's also a standalone controller, just like the Inline 10 controller is. So um, it's basically a bunch of four-way buttons, and you have LED bars as well. And uh, I could say the same thing about this controller as for many of the others. So instead, I want to focus a little bit on what I actually did on the configuration here and maybe teach you how you can um, color code the keys and to uh, send a signal to you during operation that will help you to distinguish the different things when the, the OLED displays is not enough. So let's take a look at it from the top and you'll see what I mean. So I set it up so that I basically execute macros from an ATEM switcher on the top row. You see all the macro names and that's not really what I want to focus on today. But you can see if I press this one, it's running a macro, obviously, and it's changing some sources on the uh, program and preview. Uh, I set up the LED bars here to reflect the state, uh, the tally information from the ME row. So uh, if for whatever reason I want to know that, uh, I can see uh, that um, that would be associated to the sources that you see on this bus. So down here, I set up this row for auxiliary one. Okay. So as I press these buttons, I would select sources on auxiliary one. Let's just check if that is true. I go to my software, uh, ATEM software control here. And you can see as I press these buttons, yes, I am changing sources on auxiliary uh, one. Uh, obviously, they are not um, arranged linearly. And uh, now uh, this is where the color coding comes into the picture because I decided to color code it so that uh, as an operator, you can see the first four buttons are uh, pink or purple, pink, I think. And um, that would be camera one, two, three, and four, right? So uh, then the next two buttons are green. So I color coded them differently because this is program one and program two. Then I have media player one and two. Then I have clean feed one and two and super source and finally uh, bars on the auxiliary one output. I think that's pretty useful to have color coded so that you easily, when you're sit sitting there, you, you can easily hit the right button. You can always read in the OLED display what it is. But um, I would claim that it's, it's a little uh, slower process for the human mind to uh, first read what it is uh, so those two things go hand in hand. You have the OLED displays, which will tell you this is program one, program two, and you can use your cognitive skills to uh, extract that information. But when everything is uh, intense during live production, you probably want colors to help you. So how did we do it? And uh, I'll show you. We'll take a USB cable. Uh, so I have a USB cable right here, and I plug it into the back side of the controller. And then on my Mac, I have uh, the Skahoy firmware application running. So with that one, I open the serial monitor and then I type in webconfig. And uh, actually, it was already turned on, so I'm not. Uh, I'm just doing it again. It will give me an IP address, and this IP address is now being copied into a web browser. So right there, I copy it in, and it loads the web interface on the controller live. So uh, we can now um, look at how this whole thing has been configured. For instance, how did I actually set up a button for macros? I just click this one and you can see, okay, so I select an ATEM action called play macro, number one. Mm -hmm. And that's the same thing I did for 12 buttons, okay? So if we go down to uh, this section, yes. As you might have guessed, of course, I just have an action that that's, uh, tells the ATEM switcher to route a given source to auxiliary one. But what about the coloring? So uh, it goes in two steps because um, notice that these four buttons have only information about the auxiliary um, one source they are going to route. No information about color. That information is included in section three, which is like a meta element that will then uh, apply a setting to the whole section below. And the, in that section, you see that I insert a, an action called system local color pink okay so this is why those four buttons are becoming pink so why would another two buttons be green then that is because if you go to button five and six you see that i'm not only routing program um me1 program and me2 program to auxiliary one i'm also setting a green color with my local color action so I'm overriding the pink color being set for the whole section. 
And absolutely the same thing is true when you go to section six. Here I have again purple as the main color, the base color, but if I enable these six uh, items, and, and by the way, to enable those items, I just hold down the shift key and uh, select them. You can see that for those uh, three buttons here, I choose amber and rose as the color I want to set here. Now, uh, just a fun thing, try to change this live, because quite often when you configure a controller, it's really neat uh, to have access to this local interface so you can tweak things live. So if I go to section three and section six and enable those two, I can change the, the default color, the purple color to something, uh, something else. Let's do that. Um, let's change it to mint. Yes, mint. Okay, so I'm now pressing save and then look at the panel. Okay, so I was a little bit too slow to change for you, but you can see that those purple colors are now mint colored. Let's just quickly change it to something else. Uh, for instance, dark blue, dark blue, save, and bam, there you go. It's instantly blue because working with the web config and the local web interface in the controller will apply the settings immediately. And the same is true if you wanted to change the source. So for instance, if I went to uh, this button and say, no, 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 it's not, um, uh, uh, it's, it's not source number one, it's camera number five, for instance, that I, that I want to put here. Let's just look at the controller. Then notice this little window, the display window, as I press save, the label is changing instantly to crane. And that's Unisketch. In the local configuration interface, you also have it globally on coreskahoy.com for long-term configurations. But what we just did is probably what you want to do in the field when you are at a show and you just want to tweak your controller to match the conditions you are in at the moment. Let's get